everyone. Welcome to this week's garden tour. So I like to uh, think of this as the state of the garden address here. I like to do it weekly. Keeps me, um, keeps me in the garden and, and it actually, um, doing these videos, I can look back and see how things have grown over the last few weeks. The uh, person that I watch on YouTube um, that I really, really love, um, she recommended that. And ever since I've been doing that, I feel like I have a lot more um, appreciation for the amount of growth that occurs in the garden in a short period of time. So I highly suggest if you are gardening to start taking pictures and just kind of give yourself that ability to look back and see what things looked like. It's also really helpful to compare year to year what point you're at um, at each week of the season. So today is June 15th. And if I look back, I, you know, can see what my garden looked like on June 15th last year, um, which it's kind of sad this year because it looked so much better. Um, but there's a lot of different reasons for that. And, and I'm able to kind of like analyze and learn. Um, that might be the science brain in me um, being a biology teacher. But, um, you know, it's like, what's different? What's the different variable this year um, that I didn't look at last year or didn't have to face last year? So. Um, this year also the garden, I've changed a lot of things in one season. So if things are different, it could be for a variety of reasons, which isn't good science. So that was a bad, bad, uh, move on my part, but I was like really eager to change to the raised garden beds, um, to fill the raised garden beds. We had to get a different soil. So there's all sorts of different, uh, variables going on. So let's take a look at the garden and see what we've got going on. All right, so we're gonna get started over here in the cold weather section. I wanted to show you a few things we've got going on here. Um, a lot can change in the garden in a matter of days, and this is evidence. So this is um, lettuce. So I don't know exactly what type of lettuce. It was from a mix, but you can see it got a really long stalk. I actually showed that in last week's video, but it's a lot longer now, and it has gone to flower. So I'm actually just like kind of leaving this because I wouldn't mind if some reseeded for next year um, so that I, you know, would have some more, but in this area, because it's like the area I want to keep it in, but I, normally you would rip that out um, so that you don't have a bunch of seeds growing up. And once they go to seed, the lettuce apparently tastes pretty different. So I'm not, you know, not so sure about if I'll be harvesting it. Another big thing that happened was literally within days we started with this situation, which something is eating our kale. Um, and what that something is, is two different kinds of caterpillar. Um, so Seth and I were out here this morning and I'm gonna have to come out here and do some major damage control. Um, we came out to get kale for our shakes and saw this. And this is signs of like leaf munching caterpillars, you could say. Um, and there's two main kinds that we found. I'm going to see if I can find some more. Um, there's several methods of, of trying to eliminate them. Here's one right here. They're from a moth. So this is a kind that's called a cabbage worm. And there's two. And they, look, he's like actively eating my little, uh, my little kale. I'm going to pull these out. And this is kind of fun. If I can find a chicken. Of course, the one time I want to find a chicken, they're not at my feet. Here, Flissa. You want some cabbage worms? <laughs> it's like a feast. There you go. You got it. <laughs> it's a little morbid, I guess. Um, but fun. So I was just reading up how to treat the situation. And um, they basically say to, you can spray, you can spray with water, like really hard on the bottom, but that you should kind of just get rid of any leaves that have damage because they might have eggs on the bottom. Um, oh, I just touched a bunch of them. Look at all those. So that's actually two different kinds. Um, I believe that the light green one is called a, a cabbage looper. Here, Felissa, or here, Whitey. You want some? Here. There you go. Eat them up. Eat them up, girlfriend. So 
going to come through here when I'm not on camera and I'm just going to pull off as many of these leaves that have damage as I can. Other evidence you can see, I'm not sure if you can really see down here, but you can actually see like black dots. Those are their droppings, the caterpillar droppings. So you can tell that you've got caterpillars and it can happen like over, literally overnight. You can have this happen. So I'm going to come through here later and get rid of this. And apparently, and I can notice a difference too, this um, dino kale, which is a common kale, they seem to really like, um, as opposed to the curled kale, they seem to not have as many issues with, or not, it's, they don't like to lay their eggs in there as much. So that is the update with the kale. It is looking good. <laughs> Minus the major insect damage, but I can't even believe how fast it happened. It just, within days, looked like Swiss cheese um, over here. So, come back and do that. Uh, the carrots are crazy high. I don't know if you can really see how tall they are, but this guy is like a good two and a half feet off the, the ground. Um... Again, I'm assuming that they're going to start going to seed and that I really won't get good carrots because once they go to flower, they don't taste good. Um, I didn't thin these out enough. Same thing with the beets. Beet greens here. Not really sure. I don't see a lot of beet root. Yeah, I mean, these are like barely a beet. So I'm probably just going to pull all these out and feed them to the chickens. Lettuce is still holding on strong. Look at this funky kind of lettuce. I don't know exactly what this type is. But it looks like looks like those foam fingers you get at like a basketball game. <laughs> um, you can see over here too. So this this is supposed to be cauliflower, but it just never blossomed to uh, the head of the cauliflower. But look at all the insect damage on here. So I think I'm actually just gonna pull these out. Yeah, look, I can see a bunch of the the little um, caterpillars. I'm just gonna pull it out because if in my non-expert opinion, if this thing is harboring insects that I don't want and I'm not even using it, I'm going to just get rid of it. So I'm just going to lay it on the ground. My chickens are going to come and eat it and we're going to call it a day. All right. So I'll do that. Um, looking at the cucumbers, I sprayed some organic fertilizer and they are doing so much better. They're finally starting to trellis. Um, look at, I'm going to have to come out here with a spray. You see all these little, these are eggplants. See all these little flea beetles. So this gives me the opportunity to talk about this spring that we're having and how it's so different than last year, um, because we really didn't have a good winter. Um, and so with that lack of winter, you're going to have a lot more insects because they overwintered and they didn't get killed off with a, a hard freeze. Like we barely had many days that were really, really freeze, uh, you know, frozen, the ground was frozen. So they just didn't die. And so you're going to have a lot of pests. You're going to have good pests. Well, they're not pests, they're good insects. And then you're going to have more pests. So this is actually expected for the garden. they are going to have more of these pest issues because we didn't have that hard freeze, um, this winter or just not a lot of days like that. So I'm not too surprised, but this is my first time dealing with these kind of insect issues. So um, it's gonna be interesting, learning experience as always. So these I believe are little flea beetles um, and they're hitting up my eggplant hardcore. Um, so I'm gonna pull off the diseased leaves and I'm gonna get, I have this organic spray that I can show you and I'm gonna try that. So this is a, a type of squash um, and I do see some stuff going on in the bottom, but I'm not sure what kind of bug it is. Got the flea beetles on there too. If I take a hose and I just do a good, like real like, good hard spray on these, it will actually knock some of the bugs off. So I'm going to, I might try that. Um, but these zucchini, I mean, these leaves are like massive. Look at this one. <laughs> That's a big, that's a big zucchini leaf. In between here, I have these random tomato plants still. I still pulled out a lot of them, but I still have a bunch. So cucumbers, zucchini, random tomato plants. And look at that one big cucumber. So <laughs> that's exciting. That guy looks pretty unhealthy. He was the one from inside, but 
he'll, he's still got some cucumbers on there. Then I have my bees and beans and um, some more random tomato plants. And I did notice on here another type of bug called a white fly. Um, but you see that guy right there? That little daddy long leg type spider there? They're actually not a spider. Um, daddy long leggers are, their Latin name is actually, uh, translates to aphid killer. So I am okay with that. Um, they, they do kill aphids. So that's good. P.S. Look at my chickens right now. They just discovered the, uh, cabbage that I tore out or the, the cauliflower and they're going to town. So cauliflower, <laughs> she's carrying it around cauliflower, broccoli, kale, cabbage. Those are all cruciferous vegetables. And those are going to, um, be prone to the same type of insect damage. So where you have one, you're going to have more. And so I have another patch of kale over here and under a ram random thing of lemon balm, actually, which I'm going to probably pull out of here because mint is like super invasive. So it will take over this garden bed if I don't pull it out. Um, Again, random row of tomato plants that I had nothing to do with planting. But this kale, because I have a lot of that scotch blue curled kale here, and I don't see as many bugs. Um, so, but I have to keep an eye. As soon as I, if I see any damage going on, I'm going to have to come out here and really get into the, get into the thick of it. You girls enjoying your cabbage, that cauliflower? <laughs> Go to town. Don't let me stop you. Sorry, Raptor, I scared you. I'm not following you. You're good. Let's see. Only other thing here is I have some of the sugar snap peas. Still growing. Probably not going to give me any peas because of the heat. But they're still pretty. So that's okay. Got some tomatoes here on the trellis that are actually starting to blossom. Um, so let's take a look in here. I have two zinnias that... <clears throat> these are gorgeous flowers when they bloom, so super excited about that and two little baby ground cherries which are a fruit they're a cherry that's like has a little lantern on it like a tomatillo does um but they're super good apparently so this row of tomatoes here i have done some work with um pruning and training them to trellis so basically came out with here out here with my scissors and tried to get as many of the low-lying branches off as I could without damaging the plant um, because I don't this plant actually looks so much more healthy than when I brought it out and I think that's because it I cut off a lot of the damage um, if you see leaves that have damage I go about and I just kind of pull them off but this thing is loaded with fruit already um, because it was outside or inside in my greenhouse growing. So I had two beautifully ripe tomatoes on here, but the chickens got in. I did a video. They, I was stupid and left the garden door open and they got in. Of course, if you're new to gardening, so you start off with the blossom and the blossoms here, um, that is what's going to. So if you look at the back of the blossom here, that's what turns into the stem of the fruit. So I've got a lot of blossoms, which is great news for my tomatoes. Um, and I came in and I started really trying to train them with the trellis. So what I mean by that is I want them to intertwine. So you see how like this stem, I put it back through here and then it's going to go back. And then when this gets a little bit bigger, I'm going to put it back through to the inside. Um, same thing you can see over here. Sorry about the dogs barking. Um, it came up through through here and I'm training it to go back. Now I should probably push this one back in, but see all these fuzzy, this is such a fuzzy plant. <laughs> um, that's because you could, this plant, if it fell over, which I'm training it not to, but if it did, it could actually root itself along the stem and just keep growing. So tomatoes are super versatile. Um, let's see, over here I got strawberries, which we picked some off the other day, but I don't see any 
going on right now. I'm going to give these guys a little fertilizer because I don't think I got them the other day. It's pretty cool. Look how the leaves will come out <laughs> and how they come out. And these are another kind of squash. Um, here's that random wild spinach. I'm going to get rid of that guy. So this squash looks pretty healthy. Don't even remember. It's either Rondonese squash or um, yellow scallop squash. Not sure what. And guys, I don't know what this is. It could be another squash or it could be a watermelon. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so mad at myself. It looks like a watermelon rind uh, or a vine. I'm so mad at myself for not labeling things once I, I was doing so well, like before the freeze. And then the freeze came and I was just like, oh my God, I just have to plant things. And I just planted things. I have no idea where they are. So rookie mistake. It's a surprise. We'll find out what they are when they come up. Um, but yeah, so anyway, don't know what those times, kinds of squash are. They are squash, clearly. So with the squash, you know, and squash, including like cucumber and melons, you get these nice two big leaves, those cotyledons that come up. And then the true leaf is always like this kind of shape. Um, so this one has that same shape, but it's lobed. Um, so if you imagine that it has like that comes in in the middle, almost like a heart, heart shaped. So, so yeah, they all have that same kind. Ooh, my chamomile flowers got a lot more. Chamomile is awesome. It, um, grows so easily, uh, a lot easier than I thought it would. This chamomile is like all intertwined in my tomatoes here. So again, this chamomile, you pick the flowers you dry them out in like a cardboard box inside the house in like a, you know, cool, dark kind of place. Like a, I use my pantry. And then you can use it for chamomile tea. So, awesome. I'm going to just leave these here for now. All right, these are my other tomatoes. And man, are they, they are probably the healthiest. You can't even tell, but they're like really tall and this this thick stem they're looking really good again I came in here and I tried to get as many of the branches that I could off the ground without damaging the plant so like for example this one I I think I could pull that one but I don't want to damage and leave a huge scar on the plant so I'll use my scissors for that and try and just surgically remove it but it just helps to reduce the risk of blight on the tomatoes when you start getting spots. These look awesome though. So here we've got some more tomatoes that I just transplanted. These are some of the volunteer ones. And these are my melons that my chickens got to the other day and completely uprooted. So they're actually looking like they're surviving. And that's good news. Here's another one of those random plants that I don't know what it is. Type of squash. Had a blossom. Good news. Um, healthy tomato plant here. This is parsley that's gone to seed. It's actually really pretty. Just like really delicate little seeds. So I just left it in there. Um, but this back here, I've got marigold. The eggplants, that's that damage from that flea beetle, which I can see right there. Go away. So yeah, I'm going to probably, once it cools off a little bit, I'm going to water them down and spray some. of. Uh, I have a powder type of natural pesticide. This is that purple opal basil. It smells delicious. Yarrow, more eggplant, and my peppers, which feel really healthy. Um, but... They're, so they're growing better for sure, just not a ton. So we'll kind of play that one by ear. And here's that cucumber from that trellis. So that's a good size. Now these are a, um, a pickle, a pickling cucumber. So I'm actually going to pull this guy off because um, the spines are starting to fall off. I'll show you what I mean. And I kind of just twist it to get it off of there. So you see how they're, they have little spikes? Um... And this is a pickling cucumber, so you don't want them to get too big because they actually have a very thin skin. 
And instead of using them for pickling, I'm going to use them for like a cucumber in a salad that I don't have to peel because I don't like a really thick skin on a cucumber. So I usually peel it off. But if I don't have to, I'm going to just let it let it go. Um, I'm trying to train these guys as well. So cucumbers send out little um, tendrils. So I kind of just like guide them a little bit. So see how they, they send these tendrils out all over the place. It's on its own leaf. So I'm just going to remind it, hey, you have a trellis to climb up. Maybe, you know, do the, you can see it here. It grabs hold. It's pretty cool. Um, so that's good. They're, they're healthy. They're trellising themselves. I'm giving them some guidance here. This is an onion. Still got to figure out about the onion blossoms if I have to cut them off. Look at the tendril though before it goes out. Isn't that cool? It's like a little coil. It's pretty. So this is a healthy cucumber. Not so healthy cucumber, but again, this was the guy from inside. With these things, I always pull off any of the damaged leaves because like when they're really damaged like that, I just don't even want them on the plant. Um, because I just, it's like it encourages disease. Just cut out the, cut out the tumor, you know. These beans are looking pretty good though. Um, got all these little nod, nodules that are coming out that are either going to be new leaves or, or flowers. And for, just like the tomatoes, the beans are going to come from the flower. Well, cucumbers too. They all come from the flower. Um, take a look at this. This is a little weed that looks a lot like this guy when they're babies but it's not it's just a little weed that is not beneficial at all hi Ted we're just kind of checking out this trellis here so we have this netting that goes all the way around just to protect them from the chickens while they're little because they will dust bath in this dirt like no big deal like nobody's looking um so tomatoes are looking good here and you can see the stem of these tomato plants is dark. Um, these are as opposed to like these ones. So the ones that have the dark stems are part of our variety. These are marigolds, beautiful. Great to uh, plant next to your tomatoes because they keep away some negative pests. Um, so I'm just gonna pull off some of these little suckers down here because I don't want them. Um, the, the blue stem on these ones, they're loaded with anthocyanins, um, which is going to be a dark tomato that's going to come out. So that's super exciting. Here's another one. Got some blossoms coming up, so that's good. Dark stem. I don't know if you can see that color differential, but beautiful dark stem. So these guys are looking pretty good. See how fuzzy the, the new growth is? You fly. You're a horse fly, that's what's attacking me. Now in those three back there, we actually planted some potatoes as an experiment. We don't have a lot of hope that they're gonna come up um, this year because you usually plant, based on my research, you plant potatoes um, in the winter, like late winter. And we didn't do that. We just planted them because we had some that went in the pantry to, um, to sprout. So figured mine as well, why not? And we're gonna learn from it. So it's a learning experience and if it doesn't give us any potatoes, that's okay. Our grapes that we have for this grape arbor, um, I'll show you, they're not looking so hot. I followed the directions, but they're literally just like a dead stem. So I have to look if I can revive them at all. I've been trying, but no such luck. So instead what we did was we just used the tomatoes that randomly volunteered and we just put them in here and I'm gonna figure out a way to kind of keep them up and trellised. So just some more tomatoes, right girl? Let's take a look, all these babies here. The babies, I got Ducky and the four babes, they're all hanging out in the little entryway. Hi girls, hi duck, what you doing? Am I bothering you guys? Hi, Orange. So that is the, the full garden tour, week three. 
of the full season and I hope you guys um, are doing your own gardening so that you can kind of experience this. It's not too late too. So I had a friend who wanted to plant some things and she was like, it's too late, it's already June. No, it's not. Put the seeds in the ground. I've Because you're gonna get a harvest. It just is gonna be a later harvest. Go plant some seeds, just learn and you know, you're gonna be at a better place if you just get some experiments out of the way, then if next year you just wanna start from scratch, even if you just get one container bag or you know, you can get them on Amazon, I'll put a link in the description, you can get them for so cheap on Amazon and they you can wash and reuse them, get a few bags of potting soil, it's even cheaper now than it was in the beginning of the spring at some places, and just have some fun. There are some things that you can plant even in the fall that like you know the cool weather crops so even if you don't want to plant anything right now let's say you're going to go on vacation or whatever it is you can still plant this season some cool weather crops when it starts getting colder out again which this weather has been so crazy in new jersey here we our nights are getting down into the high 40s and low 50s this in june so very strange weather take this year to learn if you have not started yet um other than that, guys, I'm going to go bring my cucumber and my chamomile inside. Um, I hope you have a great day. You can subscribe to the channel. I do weekly garden tours and then putting out other random videos about the chickens and stuff like that. Um, and you can subscribe and just hit the like button. And I appreciate that so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Um, and I'll see you next week.